Hello everybody, this is Saber Rex coming to you live with a brand new video review for the Beasts of the Mesozoic 118th scale well, Ceratopsian series action figures by Creative Beast Studio and David Silva. And today we are going to be looking at the Xenoceratops Formostensis. So here we are, there it is. And before we get any further into the video, I'd like to say Happy New Year, belatedly, of course, to everybody. <laughs> and and you might be wondering why, hey, when everything else came out, oh, t did I not jump on the bandwagon as soon as the figures came in stock? Well, I actually have been ordering the Wave 3 figures for the Ceratopsians one by one. And... Yeah, I just had some other things that needed to be taken care of that were really important and all good things. But uh, yeah, I had a wonderful Christmas and uh, I got to spend a lot of time with my family. Hey, and I couldn't get a way to do these until uh, until about a couple of days ago. So <laughs> yeah, huh. so before we take a look at the figure for the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians Xenoceratops. Let's take a quick look at the packaging for it, shall we? So here we have the big, beautiful box for Xenoceratops Formostensis with some beautiful package art by Raul Ramos. <laughs> and I absolutely love his paintings. Absolutely splendid. Inside the packaging, you will find a cardboard diorama you can place behind the figure, or as is custom for all the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians, Waves 1 through 3. Okay. And not only that, but on the back, you of course have your information about the Ceratopsian itself, as well as taking off this piece right here. All the obligatory product shots for the Wave 3 Ceratopsians. And <laughs> I cannot wait to show you guys the rest of them as I order them. <laughs> That's going to be so much fun. But anyway, inside the box you will also, of course, get the collectible card, which my Xenoceratops apparently did not come with. I think that was a manufacturing error on their part. Nevertheless, I will be uh, speaking to David Silva himself about this. He is very good at replying to these kinds of problems, and um, there may be a couple of extra collectible cards lying around that he can just chip to me. So, oh, I'm not really worried about it too much, much honestly. Hey, if the figure was missing from the box, that'd be one thing, but the card, not that big a deal. But anyway, the Ceratopsians also, of course, come with this necessary set of instructions for installing and applying the tail. And you can either use hot water to heat up the tail so that the plastic becomes soft enough to basically um, pop it onto the ball joint and the base of the hips, or you can use a hairdryer. In all fairness, I highly recommend the hair dryer more than I do the hot water because the hair dryer is actually more effective and it gets the job done a little bit quicker than the hot water does. Um, plus, sometimes the hot water really doesn't work for um, heating the plastic up enough, no matter how hot it, hot it is. But um, yeah, so let's get into the figure itself, shall we? <laughs> Ah, so here we have our glorious, glorious Xenoceratops Formostensis. And he is absolutely magnificent. His coloration is based on the color scheme of the Phuket Tree Agamid, or Agamid, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, it's a type of lizard from Thailand. Very, very brightly colored just like this dinosaur figure, and I have to say, this pattern absolutely, absolutely works 
for Xenoceratops. And I saw a color scheme done by, I believe, Andre Atushin, um, a very famous paleo artist who um, is uh, quite a presence in regards to online dinosaur art. But it looked very similar, looks very similar to that, that um, to that as well. And yeah, I have to say, it absolutely makes this figure look ever more spectacular. I mean, look at the frill. I mean, look at that. Especially in conjunction with Xenoceratops' horn array. That looks uh, so stark and bright and intimidating. It's awesome. And moving in real close, look at that face. I mean, really, look at the scale textures and how this color scheme fades into the kind of dirty brownish cream color on the belly, how it goes starkly into the black with the yellow um, enlarged scales on the, yeah, along the uh, sides of the spine. And, oh, these stripes, these stripes are absolutely to die for. They really are. But, yeah, it is absolutely amazing. It is absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, articulation-wise, Xenoceratops comes with multiple, multiple points of articulation. And, yeah. uh, his mouth opens and closes, and moving in on his head, inside his mouth you will see a tongue. That tongue is on a ball joint. You can move it around, although I think it's going to be very, very difficult for most people to move around unless they've got very small fingers like I do, um, or rather small fingertips like I do. <laughs> um, yeah. In addition to his jaw, his neck can move right, it can move left, it can go up like this, and he can get some really nice upward poses on that one. He can also go down like that. His shoulders, of course, well, his arms can rotate 360 at the shoulder. They can go in and out like all Ceratopsians in the lineup. The elbow bends about, I would say, about 90 degrees. And it can go that, that far back so that it's nice and straight. <laughs> and this is true for both legs. The feet can swivel like so. They do have wrist swivel and they can also go forward a little bit and back about that much and same is true for the leg on the right side yeah, His, yeah. now i wouldn't recommend um tr doing a full 360 for the um shoulder joints because that wrist swivel um well, that, that, that shoulder swivel, um, the clearance issues are very, very uh, noticeable there. Um, with the hips, that is not um, a problem whatsoever. He can do a full 360 um, in regards to the hip joint uh, for the hind legs. And I'm going to tell you right now, the knee joint on this figure is very, very tight, especially on the left leg, but he can move his legs forward about that much. And on the back, he can move it about that far back for the knee. Um, if you have problems with tight joints like this, I highly recommend either soaking him in the hottest tap water you can, like hottest tap water your sink will create, just letting them soak for a few minutes in that, or better yet, a hair dryer for the joints. This is what I use for um, loosening joints on all my Ceratopsians, and even the Raptors. But his ankle also moves that far back, about that far forward. Not a lot of uh, ankle joint ain't moving in there, but the foot goes forward and back about that much, 
and it also has some swivel so you can and really really stabilize it now uh, straightening out these legs <clears throat> so that we can show them off later in regards to size comparisons let's also move to the hips and show just how he can move there the torso can move right can move left yeah and there are some clearance issues with the um, with the with the uh, the hip joints here just because of the shape but uh, he can also move his torso up like so which kind of looks weird heard if you um, with that gap there but he can also move it down like so <sighs> so he looks really really good and of course last but not least the tail can move right left up and down <laughs> like that and yeah I absolutely love this figure he is absolutely fantastic <laughs> yeah now in regards to fun facts about Xenoceratops Xenoceratops is one of the um, one of the few known dinosaurs from the foremost formation in Canada it is um, the only known ceratopsian from that fossil formation um, at present that we know of and there were a couple other dinosaurs that um, are known from there um, mostly Pachycephalosaurs, um, the Hadrosaur, Probrachylophosaurus, um, some Troodontids and Dromaeosaurs, that is to say the raptors and their cousins, um, and of course the Tyrannosaur Thanatotheoristes, aka the Death Reaper, which was Xenoceratops' main enemy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just love bringing that one up. And I hope that um, we might get a repaint of the Despletosaurus figure when it comes out for Beasts of the Mesozoic um, in regards to the Tyrannosaurs, because we are getting the Tyrannosaurs and we're getting all of them. But I hope we get a repaint of the um, Despletosaurus at some point, so that way um, we can have Thanatotheoristes uh, and Xenoceratops going head to head. That would be a lot of fun. Now, um, in regards to its family relationships, Xenoceratops is a member of the Centrosaur family, uh, subfamily of uh, Ceratopsians. And yeah, it is most closely related to, among other dinosaurs, um, Medusa Ceratops, Alberta Ceratops. Sinoceratops and Wendy Ceratops. Those are it, pretty much its closest relatives. Um, but yeah, it, it's very distinct looking from them, even though they do have a lot of these um, frill horns. But yeah, it, it's its horn array is probably the coolest of those of um, those five interrelated dinosaurs. But yeah. Just an amazing, amazing animal, and I really hope we get to learn a lot more about Xenoceratops in the near future, because honestly, we need some more fossils of this. I want to know what this animal was like as it grew up. I want to know um, if it was as ferocious or as, um, yeah, or as social as other ceratopsians, like its relatives, such as um, Centrosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus, which lived in large her herds, but because we don't really have many fossils of Xenoceratops at present. But, yeah. Now, size-wise, Xenoceratops as a figure is very big. This is 118th scale, and... That equates to him being about, I would say, uh, about 15 inches long. If you take that tape measure very seriously. Height-wise, at the top of his frill, um, he is about seven and a quarter inches, maybe seven and one third. 
herds inches tall at the shoulder he is or well, at the top of his um, shoulders he is about six maybe even uh, six and a quarter inch tall yeah but he's quite large he actually is comparable in size to the Pachyrhinosaurus which is one of the other really large uh, ceratopsians in the lineup. Um, I actually have Pachyrhinosaurus here for comparison and Centrosaurus for comparison too because they are along with it some of the biggest figures uh, in the lineup that are 118th scale. So I'm gonna put Pachyrhinosaurus right behind him like so. Just move it so you can see them both or rather put them both on an angle so you can see them just like that and as you can see they are pretty pretty close in size in fact I would say they are about the same height hey Pachyrhinosaurus has a little bit more height in regards to his neck um, and his uh, shoulders but they are roughly about the same height Eight, uh, standing up in this, this particular manner. Now, taking Pachyrhinosaurus away <laughs> and putting Centrosaurus in, once I have his legs straightened out, <laughs> uh, I think the difference will become clear which is the taller figure. And it turns out that uh, I may have been a little off in my measurements. They are almost exactly the same height, although it seems like Xenoceratops has the little has a little bit of height advantage. He may be just a few centimeters taller, not by much, but uh, he definitely seems to be a little bit taller. He's definitely taller at the frill, but. Um, he definitely seems to be very close in height, just a little bit taller than the Centrosaurus. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, they absolutely are fantastic. Now, in regards to price, um, I got uh, the Xenoceratops um, at the store price for. Um, the, the Wave 3 Ceratopsians for Beasts of the Mesozoic. So he's about $89. Um, in in pre-order price, this animal was um, about $85, which is not bad. It It's still a bit expensive, but um, if you save up for it, this is definitely a figure worth getting, especially if you want a more obscure Ceratopsian that's really going to stand out and draw attention both with its unique frill array and its unique appearance and color scheme. Yeah, this guy is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot recommend him enough. He, he's just way too cool to pass up for pretty much anyone. I mean, honestly, who can say no to that color scheme? I mean, yeah, it's gorgeous. Or that, or that frill. Yeah. Now, yeah, the other thing that's really cool about this particular Ceratopsian uh, figure is that, uh, yeah, he, he is just absolutely extremely um, well done in regards to his design. Um, in regards to the toy design, I, not not that any of them aren't, but he absolutely stands out as far as I'm concerned, especially in regards to the scale pattern that the sculpting hang, hang was done on for this. It, it's it's just way way too cool. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to order this figure for yourself, you can find these figures at places like EverythingDinosaur.uk. For those of you. Who, who are living um, abroad um, in places like Europe or uh, you can also get them at Big Bad Toy Store or of course the main site where you can get these is creativebeast.com where you can 
actually purchase these figures directly and they will be sent to you who um, from uh, the company in Hackensack, New Jersey because <laughs> yeah it's just really cool. I, I actually got this figure like within two days of my ordering him which is absolutely phenomenal. I really recommend um, everyone in the US um, who can uh, to definitely get it off Creative Beast uh, if possible and if not that or then definitely Big Bad Toy Store because those are the most amazing and legitimate places to get these figures yeah and I also hope that you guys will be more than patient with me in regards to um, how quickly or slowly I bring out these next future reviews for um, the Ceratopsians um, and be sure to tune in next time when I review Pentaceratops. That's the next one I'm getting in the lineup. Um, I've, I've had my eye on Pentaceratops for a long time, and I cannot wait to review him because he is absolutely one of my favorite hits of all the Ceratopsians in the Wave 3 lineup. So, be sure to tune in. And, and <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to see you there. So this is Saber Rex signing off saying, you're never too old to play with toys. Be a toy nerd. Be proud of it. And never stop playing. Hey, thank you. Have a good day. Hey, and farewell.